In this video, I'll be working through the maths question you see on the screen here from the 2024 Cambridge A-Level Mechanics paper. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, or a different paper entirely, check out the description below for a link to playlists. And if you find this video or any of my videos useful and would like to help the channel out, if you are in a class group with other people sitting the exam, a share in that group would really help out. Failing that, a like, subscribe, or even a super thanks. In question two, they give us an equation for V, uh, this um, quadratic equation here. And they ask us to find the set of values for which the acceleration of the particle that's described by this equation is positive. Now, um, hopefully you see acceleration, they give you velocity, you remember that acceleration, oh that's not D, acceleration is equal to the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So we can find acceleration. Acceleration is equal to the derivative of this, that's 44, um, minus two times six, minus 12, T, and that goes to zero. That's acceleration. So what they've asked us is more of a maths question. Find a set of values for which A is positive. So for A is bigger than zero. Or instead of A, we can put in 44 minus 12 T is bigger than zero. So we just start rearranging here. We get 44 is bigger than 12 T. Um, I, like I like to keep the variable on the left. So let's switch sides. We get 12 T and 44. Be careful though. You have to switch the, the greater than or less than. Um, it has to still make sense. 12 T was less than. 12t has to be less than here. Um, divide both sides by 12, we get, uh, what does that go in? Uh, 11 over three. We get t is less than 11 over three. So the set of values for, um, for t for which acceleration of the particle is positive. So I guess, um, yeah, I guess they would want uh, t to be bigger than zero or bigger than equal to zero because in this case, time would be a, a positive. I don't think they care if you don't have that in. Anyway, that's the answer part A. Next, they ask to find the two values um, for T at which P returns to the origin, returns to O. This, uh, the maths of this question isn't that difficult, uh, but I think a lot of students would have um, got stuck in this. What, what on earth are they asking? Uh, so they're asking returning to a certain point that's not acceleration. Acceleration tells us um, the rate of change of velocity. Velocity tells us speed. If we want to know about where we are, we need a distance, we need a displacement, and that's a S. So we need to find a, let's put the board here, we need to find an S. Now we're already dealing in differentiation here. So hopefully you remember S is equal to the integral of V dt. Uh, remember, a, let's write all of them. a is dv dt, v is ds dt, and then to go backwards, we integrate both of these. We get s and the integral of v. That's up here. And you could go v is equal to the integral of a as well. But uh, what, they, what you need for this part of the question is you need to integrate uh, v. You need to integrate this guy here and get s. So what is that? Uh, the integral here is 44 t, uh, this goes up one, from t1 to t2, and we divide that by the two. And uh, next we have minus six t uh, squared goes up one to three, and we divide this by three. And uh, next we have 36, and uh, the t here goes up one, there's no t's, so that goes up to one t, or just t, and um, that's it, plus some constant c. Now we're in the real world, so constants can be found. Constants are just, what happens at the beginning? Uh, what happens when t is zero? What would be here? Um, well, they talked about the origin. So we're, you can use any number you want, really, I guess, uh, just once you use it in the next part. But um, it, would, it wouldn't make any sense not, not to use zero. Zero would be the obvious choice there. Uh, the origin is zero. But you could technically use any number. Okay, so this is a formula for s. Um, find two values of t when p returns to zero, the origin. That's when is s zero? Um, so they want you to find two of them. Uh, find two values 
but they say returns to the origin. Let me just spoil it a bit. Uh, there's actually three answers. One of them is obvious. When t is zero, this is all zero. And we knew that because it started at the origin. It didn't return. Uh, we need two more, unfortunately. So let's just try and um, solve this. We, tr we should try and factor. Well, let me clean it up first. Uh, this is equal 20, 22t squared minus 2t cubed minus uh, 36t. Uh, let's factorize this as much as we can. We can take t out of every one. Uh, we can take 2 out of every one. Um, yeah, let's take 2t out of every one. 2t goes into this 11 t, uh, sorry, just t now, minus 2t squared minus 36. And what we're interested in, this is all s, we're interested in when this equals zero. So like I said, one obvious answer is just when t equals zero. That's, uh, that's pointless. So I, the other answers though, I can reduce down to this bracket being zero. That's a quadratic. There's a square, there's a non-square, and a number. Um, let's take minus out of all of these. Uh, yeah, let's do that now. Minus two out here. That'll turn into a minus, a plus, and a plus. Let's write this again uh, so it looks... Sorry, this should have been just t squared, shouldn't it? Yeah, I took two out of all of these. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I took two, I tr meant to take two out of all of them. That should be uh, 18. My God, my maths is pretty bad today. Let's rewrite this as a more obvious quadratic. t squared first. t squared minus 11t plus 18. And this still equals zero. So we're just solving this quadratic and it's not a bad quadratic to solve. It's uh, uh, two numbers to multiply to get 18. So I try three and six. Can three and six combine to get 11? No. Uh, what other numbers get 18? Uh, two and nine. Two and nine can get to 11 by adding them. Uh, minus 11 though, we need minus 2 and minus 9, and they do get plus 18. So the answers here are t equals 2 and t equals 9, and we already found t equals 0, which was the trivial answer. Uh, and th that'd be it for part B. You don't have to do this, but th that means we can draw this guy, uh, uh, draw his position here. So he starts off at 0, there's a 0 point. Um, he hits 0 when t equals 2, he's at 0 when t equals 9, uh, here somewhere. Also, when t is really big, uh, this number will dominate the, the minus 2 t, um, uh, t cubed part. That will dominate when t is uh, big, and when t is really big, cubed will get bigger, multiplied by minus will get really small. So when t is really big, we'll go down into the the minus world, so let's put it there. Uh, when t is a minus, minus a million, be minus, 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 still a minus, times minus two, a positive, a really big positive up here somewhere. So we can draw over the rough shape of this guy. Looks like that. Uh, not important, sometimes it is in these questions. Anyway, that's it for part B. Oh, I, I thought there was a part C for some reason. Uh, that's it for the whole question. If you have any follow-up questions, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.